welcome back or to my channel today's video I am here with one of my three whites tree frogs this is bottom he is my newest whites tree frog today's video we are gonna go over all of their care and everything that will be required for them to thrive in captivity and for you to provide a lovely home for them with everything being said we're gonna jump into the video and talk all about these guys and their care requirements it is controversial on how much space these guys need but in my opinion I think 20 gallons per frog once they are an adult I personally have my three boys in a 75 gallon so they have some extra room to move around but I still would love to upgrade them even more in the future um, but in my opinion an adult needs at least 20 gallons of space to fully thrive and have enough space for themselves since these frogs can get kind of large. For size for these guys, this is about how large a adult male will get. Um, there is known to be a lot of obesity with these frogs in captivity. A lot of people feed them way more than they should or they think it's cute to have a really fat frog. Some females can get up to double the size, so you definitely need to make sure that you're giving your white tree frogs a proper amount of space. Side note, you don't need to own multiple white tree frogs, you can just own one if you prefer, uh, but they do perfectly fine in communal environments and a lot of people take advantage of that since a lot of herps are not really fond of being together so a lot of people enjoy them interacting with each other but they don't necessarily need a friend some like having friends more than others so kind of depends your frog but i'm sure if you got one as a baby it wouldn't really matter what you end up doing white's tree frog feeding these guys are insectivores so they primarily eat insects i get questions on a daily basis can you feed freeze-dried insects can you feed dead insects can you feed insects from outside and all of my answers to those questions are no uh, freeze-dried and dead insects are just not beneficial to them nearly as much as a live insect would be and bugs from outside can have parasites illnesses and potentially could be toxic to white tree frogs since we don't know what they can exactly and cannot have in captivity. Uh, so stick to captive bred bugs. I recommend superworms, mealworms, dubia roaches, crickets, uh, occasionally waxworms, silkworms, hornworms, black soldier fly larvae. I personally use crickets, dubia roaches, black soldier fly larvae, and superworms as my staples for all of my animals that ingest bugs on a regular basis. Babies usually will need, really small babies will need to be fed every day and then they can slowly be fed every other day. And then an adult usually eats every three to seven days or sometimes even longer if they do have really slow metabolism. These frogs are known for getting fat very easily since they are pretty lazy and they just kind of sit around. So, so definitely make sure your frog is not getting too obese because that could be concerning and cause a lot of issues on their organs and just have them suffer health issues that really you don't need and your frog really doesn't need. So. Uh, that's their food requirements. Generally, they are pretty easy to feed as long as you are able to get bugs. You can order bugs online, get them at reptile expos, at reptile stores. Uh, a lot of pet stores have them, such as chain pet stores like PetSmart, Petco's, etc. As well as you can begin breeding your own. You need to do some research on that and figure it out. But uh, there's many different places that provide insects for your frogs and other herbs. <laughs> Inside of your frog's enclosure, you are going to need a lot of foliage, a lot of wood, a lot of places for them to hide and climb. Um, I have a froggy dish, as a lot of people like to call it. They're from Amazon. It's actually a soap dish. Frogs love it. He sleeps in it every single day of his life. Uh, so I recommend getting a couple. You could get some off-branded ones, but I personally really like the frog ones. They're really cute. Just provide them with a lot of places to hide and shelter, but also a lot of places to climb. Um, they do kind of sit on the ground sometimes, but also if you give them the space, they will easily climb um, and sometimes even stick to the glass of their enclosure. So they are quite the explorers and they absolutely love to to, uh, have new things and look at new environments and make sure you're changing up their cage. They're also going to need a good sized water bowl. Um, my frogs go through water insanely fast. I have a very large dish, probably 16 ounces, and I am adding new water to it probably twice or three times a week, as well as cleaning it out. These guys are pretty big pigs, they're pretty messy, and the little bit of goop on their skin that's kind of like known like a sticky amphibian, uh, they will get it all over the glass and they're very sensitive skin which is why I'm wearing gloves. So you're going to need to make sure that you're not using any chemicals or anything and you're going to need to use natural things such as a vinegar water mix or a peroxide and water mix to clean their glass off. Handling these guys is controversial. A lot of people have their own opinions about it but I personally only handle my weights tree frogs probably once a month and the reason for that is if I'm usually weighing them, moving them, or taking pictures of them or doing a basic health check. I do not handle my white tree frogs often. I don't recommend it. 
personally no more than once every two weeks in my opinion it's just safest they are very sensitive skin you don't want them to get diseases or illnesses and I noticed with white street frogs they're probably the most sensitive pets I own and you just need to be very careful especially with their skin they can get bacterial infections pretty easily and just a whole plethora of things since they are amphibians and their skin is pretty sensitive. So that is something you're definitely going to need to consider before getting white tree frog. You're not able to handle them super often even with the precaution of having gloves with no powder or scent on them and even when you completely clean your hands etc. It's just not the safest. I notice white tree frogs don't seem to get too stressed with handling uh, so when you do handle them they should be pretty good with it but um, it's just completely for the safety of the animal. So. Some facts about white's tree frogs. A white's tree frog can live anywhere from the average of 8 to 25 years. So uh, this is not a hamster type animal. You're going to have this animal for a very long time. So it's definitely something to really think about and make sure that you're going to have the needs to care for them for the majority or all of their lives. White's tree frogs usually have very goofy personalities. Uh, they are completely food motivated, 100%. They are just absolutely insane every time I put my hand in to move something they're launching at my hand to bite me because uh, they think my fingers are food they are just psychotic but I absolutely love them they're so funny they're so entertaining anytime I'm bored at like 9 p.m. I'm like you know what let me go watch my white tree frogs I love feeding them they're so entertaining to feed they're just such goofy goobers yeah isn't that right? Male white tree frogs also croak. This is something to consider, especially if you are going to have your white tree frogs in your bedroom. Male white tree frogs will start croaking usually about six months or so, six months to a year. But my dad stays down here really late sometimes, and he said that they croak really loud for about five minutes, a couple times a night, and then they stop. So uh, that's kind of up to you, but it's definitely something to think about. So if they are going to be in your room and you think this will bother you, maybe look into getting females or confirmed females. You need to do spot cleaning daily or weekly in your white tree frogs enclosure to obviously make sure again all the goop is off their glass their water is clean and fresh as well as picking up any poop or like dead insects and then once a month do a full cleaning of taking everything out and completely cleaning everything um, such as the substrate cleaning off the wood and leaves and foliage and this just provides for a much cleaner environment for them so there is a lot less likely ability for them to get sick or catch something and also you just want your pet to be healthy substrate for white tree frogs you can use a plethora of different things a lot of people go the bioactive route for these guys um, and if you don't know what bioactive is it's like completely like loose soil uh, live plants a lot of people have cleanup crew in the enclosure I personally don't have a bioactive because I kill all of my plants you can use um, cypress mulch, eco earth, pa just paper towel. I know a lot of people use a froggy foam. Um, I'm not exactly sure what site you can buy it on, but you'll have to look into that. But a lot of people use a lot of different things, and you can kind of look into it and see what's best for you and your frog. I personally use a cypress mulch, eco earth substrate. I really recommend doing more research than this video and looking into more things um, like my video on pros and cons of white tree frogs if you want to learn a little bit more about some things that are completely worthwhile in having them and some things that might make you reconsider on maybe getting a different pet or just completely not getting a pet. I really appreciate you guys watching this video and I hope that this helped you get a little bit of a better grasp on caring for white tree frogs and it gave you a little bit more of an idea of what you should do in choosing your pet. Thank you guys so much for watching. I will see you guys next week. I love you so much. Stay awesome. Bye guys.